here we are in the last weekend of the year. And we're in a very unique position where we are exiting the old year, 2018, and we are one foot into the new year. And we are in this unique position where we can look back and we can look forward. And that's why I want to start this series with you, a two-part series today and uh, next weekend called The Human Time Machine. Because do you know that we humans have the ability to time travel? We can do mental time travel. We can go back and we can go forward in time. We can go forward to visit our future, project ourselves into the future. And I'm excited about that because I cannot wait to see how good-looking we all become in 2019. <laughs> but visiting the future is one thing. We can also revisit our past. Yeah. That is very interesting. Amen? Amen? And now, some of us think, well, what's the big deal about that? You know, every one of us can do it. It is as normal as breathing to go forward and see how we are when we start work or the car that you're going to buy, the wife that you're going to buy, I mean, uh, marry. <laughs> or we can go back to the past. And we can, you can go back to your, so some of the guys, your army times. You can go back to your secondary school times. So you can go back as well. So we can do that. So what's the big deal? Now, listen, we are the only species in the universe, human beings, that can do that. Animals cannot. See, your dog at home, regardless of how cute it is, cannot go back and, oh, those good old days. When I was a puppy, they used to like me more. You know, your dog cannot go back and, oh, those good old days when I ran wild in the streets before I had an owner. And the, my owner sterilized me. Oh, uh, ouch. You see, your dog cannot go back. Your dog cannot go ahead into the future. Dogs don't dream about the future. Dogs don't go, I have a dream. <laughs> that one day we will, we canines will not be judged by the color of our fur, <laughs> but the content of our bark. <laughs> they, they cannot go to the future. Your, your very Singaporean goldfish in his little fish bowl cannot dream that one day we'll upgrade to a bigger fish bowl. See, animals cannot do that, but, but we humans, God has given us the ability that a lot of times we take for granted that we can project and time jump into our future and we can go back into our past. And, and you know, it's very, very sad for people who, who have uh, struck down by diseases like uh, dementia like uh, Alzheimer's disease. Because we do our mental time jump through our mind. Our minds is a neural time machine. Pretty cool, huh? That you and I have a neural time machine that animals do not have. But sadly, the people who are sick with this uh, um, dementia, they, their time machine is damaged they lose memories of the past. They cannot remember their past anymore. They also cannot envision a future. And so it's a very cruel disease when they are stuck in the present. They are stranded in time, stranded in the, in the endless now. They are almost like a, a prisoner of the present. So, so they cannot have memories of the past, they cannot envision the future. 
So if you have ever been up close and, and personal with someone suffering from dementia, you, you can see the cruelty of that disease. But also, after hearing this, you can appreciate more of what God has given you and I. Look, it's not no, no longer what's the big deal. It is a big deal. Animals cannot do that. If our time machine is, is damaged, we cannot do that. It is part of hu being human. And, and you know why it's so important? Listen, because God is the same way. God is a God who is both eternal and immortal as well. It is part of God's nature. See, the verse says here in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, I believe. And it says here, God, the King who is eternal and immortal and invisible, the only God, He is God, and God is both eternal, immortal, but when He created us, He created us like Him in His image. It says here, Genesis 1 verse 26 and 27, God says this, Let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. And God created human beings. He created us God-like, reflecting God's nature. And so because God can time travel, because He's immortal and eternal, we have a little bit of that. We are limited. We cannot time travel physically. But we can time travel mentally. That's a little bit of God's nature. So God didn't create animals that way. God created you and I that way because we are special. And we can time travel. It's an amazing thing where while our bodies cannot time travel, well, let me put it this way. Some of you, when you're in class, you also time travel. <laughs> when you're sitting in your lecture hall, your bodies are there. But, but hello, you, you are not there. You have time travel. I do not know where you are. But coming back, while well, our bodies cannot time travel, our minds and our heart can. See, how many of you have, have ever think about the past? I mean, have you ever sat or, or stood on the crowded train, right? And then you think of something funny that happened yesterday. And then you smile and then you laugh. And before you know it, the whole train, they're staring at you and, and you're, you're making a fool out of yourself. You have time traveled mentally, you have time traveled with your heart. Yeah. Now, how many of you, like me, have ever gone back in time and think of something that you said or something that happened and then you cringe? <laughs> have you thought about it and you go, Ugh. <laughs> you, You're not there, but, but just mentally, emotionally, like, oh, you, you feel like digging a hole and, and, and jumping your, inside. We can time travel, and God made us this way. Amen? Amen? So God has created us to be a race of mental time travelers. Because He's immortal, because He's eternal, we are a little bit like Him. We have a neural time machine, and that is our brain. Amen? Amen. So let's talk about time travel to the past. When you go backwards, you know what? It's called memories. So the debate here is not whether we can mental time travel. That's a given. The debate here is when you make that jump to the past, into your memories, where do you go? Do you go to bad places, dark places, time of pain or time of hurts, or do you go to bright, sunny places? Do you go to the good times and the good people? The question here today is, how do you use the time machine that God has given to you? And you know what? God teaches us how. In the Bible, it says Philippians 4.8, and I love this verse. It says here, summing it all up, my friends, I'll say this, you fill your minds and you meditate on what? On things that are true. Not fake news. 
things that are noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. And I like this part. You think about, you time travel to the best, not the worst. To the beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. You time travel to the past, into your memories of the best. You know, your phone has this thing, sometimes it goes, the best of memories. Instagram has best of 2018. You know, sometimes our phones are smarter than us. Because for some of us, we don't look at the best of 2018, we look at the worst of 2018. I mean, even our phones know not to send, the algorithm doesn't send you the worst of 2018. So, same thing for your mind. Focus on the best. Not just of 2018, of your past, of your secondary school, of your family. Not the worst. Focus on the beautiful, not the ugly. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm focusing on you. I'm just helping you guys learn pickup lines. <laughs> Cheesy pickup lines. Focus on the beautiful. Life can be bad sometimes. Life can be ugly sometimes. Ugly situation can happen. But God says, you know what? Even though it happens, focus on the beautiful. And, and I love this the most. Focus on things that you praise, not curse. You know, I bet you, you would have memories of, of events, of people, and the moment you think of him or her, you know, you, you, you feel the vulgarity swelling up in your soul and uh, the, the anger coming like the, up like the volcano and it, it's at the tip of your tongue. But God says what? Not on things to curse but on things to praise. Do you have that? This year, as you look back, and before 18, do you have things and people that you praise? Beautiful things. Amen? So this is how we should use our time machine. The question to you today is, how are you using your neural time machine that God is giving you? You know what's the problem? Some people remember the things that they should forget and forget the things that they should remember. Don't be that kind of person. They remember the things that they should forget. There are a lot of ugly things and bad people and things to curse that you should forget. Forget it. Don't remember that. But you know what's the problem? We often forget the things that we should remember. The good things, the good people. Hey, good family, good times, good friends, good church, good pastor. Re Sorry, a little bit narcissistic here today. I'm feeling the positive vibes. So, so remember the things you should remember Forget the things you should forget. And that's how you enter and exit the old year and enter the new year. Yeah. Amen. So, we are the pilot of our neural time machine. So, how are you going to pilot it? Where are you going to send your time machine? Let me propose, when you use your mental time machine, program in the code, Thanksgiving. That is your password, that is your programming, that is your iOS. You only bring your time machine to a place, to a time, to a people where you can give thanks. So how do you travel to the past? Easy, Thanksgiving. Anything that you cannot give thanks for, don't go there. It's a deep, dark valley. It's a deep, dark day. Don't go there. Go to the bright, sunny ones. Amen? Amen. Listen, some of us may not have a good 2018. Some of us may not even have a good past. 
Your childhood could be a disaster. Your secondary school days is a catastrophe. Your history is a tragedy. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Look at what Jesus says. The Bible says here, when Jesus tells us, when we Christians have communion, and it is to, to remember something, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, Jesus says this. Look at this. On the night that He was about to be betrayed, Jesus took the bread and He cursed. I mean, He was going to be betrayed. No, even in the deepest, darkest night, He gave thanks. And then He went on to say that every time you take communion, you remember it. And how you remember it? Oh, it's so hard to be a Christian. You get crucified. No, you remember it by giving thanks. So even if you had a bad 2018, even if your past is a catastrophe, you know what? You should give thanks. You know how? You are saying, God, I thank you that even though my childhood was so bad, even though my past was horrible, hey, I am still here. I am still here. It did not kill me. I am still here. So I thank you that I survived that. You know what? Let me tell you, you, know, you are not a victim of your circumstances. You are not a victim even of people's ugliness. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You are not a victim. You survive. But in fact, let me tell you what, I don't really like the word survivor. Pastor Leah had cancer and, and people say, oh, you are a cancer survivor. Technically true, but I don't even like that. You know, a survivor, give me the image of the ship has sunk and you're kind of floating in the water like, I'm a survivor! <laughs> or, or the plane have crashed and I'm a survivor! No, 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 she didn't just survive, she thrived. Yeah. So you are not a victim, you're not even a survivor, you are a fighter, you are a victor. All things work for good to those who love God and are called according to His purposes. So you, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you too. You're not just a survivor. You are a fighter. So you can give thanks that no matter what life throws at you, no, one, no wonder what plots the devil has against you, whatever kind of evil or darkness, hey, I'm still here. End of 2018. You guys have tried. I'm still here. Hallelujah. And you give thanks. You give thanks. Amen. Now, how about our travel to the future? To the past, it's our memories. To the future, it's our imaginations. It's our imagination. And the same question when you travel to the future, you do the mental time jumps. Where do you go? Do you go into a place of fear and anxiety for the future? Or do you go into a bright future, bright horizon? You know, the Bible says here, Ephesians 3.20. I love this. The Bible says, Now to Him, to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all, all that we ask or imagine. God, who is powerful, can do for you and I all that we ask. In other words, that's our verbal prayers. But it goes beyond, it's bigger than verbal prayers, but also all that we can imagine. Whatever good that you can imagine, even if it's a silent prayer of your heart, a silent dream of your heart, if you can imagine it, God says He can do it for you according to His will. He can do it for you. It says here, according to the power that is at work within us. So it's not our power. I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking. The power is God's power to make it happen but according to that power that works within us. It means that our imagination must cooperate with God. 
It means that our imagination cannot contradict God. So when you imagine a great and bright future for yourself, guess what? God can make it happen for you. So how do you program your time machine? To the past, it is the code word Thanksgiving. To the future, the code word is faith. Faith. When you have faith, you bring your time machine to a good place. Hebrews 11.1 says, Now faith brings our hopes into reality. Your faith brings your hopes. How many of you have hopes? (laughs) The rest of you didn't put out your hands, you're hopeless. (laughs) When you have hope, it is the faith that brings it to reality. Look, Look at this. It is the faith that becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things that we long for. So faith brings our hopes into reality. You know what? The opposite is true. Fear, worries, anxieties bring our nightmares into reality. So where do you send your time machine? Into the zone of faith or into the area of your nightmares or fears. So, so if you think, oh no, I'm, I'm going to graduate soon and all my friends have the, the resume and, and the great internship and I'm, I'm just going to have a, a horrible career. You know what? If you have fear, it will come to pass. Yeah. And to all the single ladies out there, you're thinking, oh, all the good guys have been taken up already. You know, I, I'm leftovers with the leftovers. You know what? Then guess what? All your fears will come true because you have such a low self-esteem. You are so desperate for girls or for guys, for the same, for, for the opposite. You say, oh, anyone who looks human comes along, you take him. <laughs> your fears will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Go into the zone of faith. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, Even Jesus in the Bible, you know, he says in Matthew 6, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Remember that? Now, Jesus is not saying, don't care about tomorrow. (laughs) Jesus is not saying, hey, chill, man. Jesus is not saying, don't plan for tomorrow. Jesus is saying, don't worry about tomorrow. You know why? Because worry is a form of fear. Worry is projecting yourself into the future and seeing bad things. And that is why worry is the misuse of your imagination. Worry is a misuse of your God-given imagination. You have brought your time machine to a wrong place. Fear is the abuse of your imagination. You know, I never watch horror movies. Never. Partly because I'm a chicken. But partly is I do not understand the logic of paying money to be tortured. But really, really, jokes aside, I want to have faith, not fear. Fear is an abuse of your imagination. Why do I load in with all these fears? I'm abusing my imagination. Something that God has given me that I should be responsible for. Hey, we don't, we don't, we don't accept it when people abuse us verbally, right? We don't accept it when people abuse us physically. So why do we abuse ourselves mentally? Why do we abuse ourselves mentally by painting pictures of disaster and bad things that will happen for us in the future? You know what we should do? We should have godly dreams and visions because vision is the right use of our imagination. Vision is the right use of our imagination. 
And that's what God says, Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. First of all, let's stop here. God says that He is thinking of you and I. You know, maybe some of us, we feel like a speck in, the, in this big universe. And we think like nobody cares, nobody even notices if I die. That's not true. And even if that is true, you know what? God cares and God notices. And God thinks of you. That's the love of God for you. And when He thinks of you, what does He think about? Not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of peace. To give you a future and a hope. God wants you to have a great future, great hope. So in the imagination of God, when God is thinking about you, He smiles. He looks at you and says, Wow, this young man, this young lady, he's going to have a great future. Yeah, I, I know about the background. I, I know about the problems. But you know what? He's going to have a great future. When he thinks of this young lady sitting here, he thinks he, she's going to have a great future. Are you getting this? So today, as we stand at this unique weekend, as you look back, to 2018 as you look forward into the new year how do you do it where do you send your time machine as you look back program in thanksgiving and as you look to the future not just 2019 but beyond your future your career your family your relationships where do you go that is what god wants us to know Go ahead with faith. So this is what we're going to do as we end this first part. Why don't we have everybody just close your eyes and let's do our mental time travel right now. And I'm just going to keep quiet. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to worship. As we worship God with this song, same thing. Thanksgiving faith. Thanksgiving faith. Why don't we all stand out right now? Let's worship Jesus. My life is built on your faithfulness My hope is held in your promises And I take each step with your confidence Cause I am yours And I am yours My life My life is built your faithfulness my hope is held in your promises and I take each step with your confidence cause I am yours I am yours you never fail you I trust your name for greater things. You will come. 